I'm Robert Plank and let's set up Facebook and Google social login and social registration on our WordPress membership sites powered by MemberGenius which you can grab at membergenius.com if you don't have it yet. So what we're talking about is using this Member Genius plugin to add buttons such as these. So when someone goes to log in to your membership site, they can either log in using an existing username and password, or they can click one button and log in with Facebook or Google. See, I only clicked just one button, and now I'm instantly logged into this membership site. And that's what we're going to add here. We have a site already, Membership Newbie, and right now we have Member Genius installed. But as you can see, there is no login with Facebook button on the login page here. And when we, I guess that's all we have, uh, all we have protected there. So what we're going to do here is we're going to log in. We are going to go to our dashboard and then we're going to go to the member genius section and the tab we're looking for is social and we can add our information for Facebook or for Google one or the other. I'll be showing both of those to you today. So what we're going to be doing here is we'll be uh, setting up Facebook and Google but you can set up just one if you want to. This will add a login with Facebook button on the login page and on the sidebar and on the registration page and the way it works is when someone goes and clicks to log in with Facebook, if their primary email address with Facebook matches their existing account, it lets them in. And if they use different email addresses, which most people do, it will ask them only one time to log in the old fashioned way. And once it is, then their account will be permanently linked to that Facebook account. And in the future, if they want to log in with their username and password, great. If not, click the one Facebook button and now they are logged in. So the place to go is Member Genius Social tab. And we have instructions built in on that tab. And we have instructions built in in the written material but I'm going to show you here in video because sometimes that's easier. We'll go to Member Genius, the social tab and choose Facebook and we're going to create an app. So don't get don't get worried if uh, they use this terminology an app. Uh, we're just going to click on a couple of things and every separate website where you're going to offer social login you'll set up a separate they call it an app in Facebook and we're just basically telling Facebook that we're using this specific website, this specific domain name or .com name to ask for people's Facebook logins. And we'll link you on in that tab to developers.facebook.com slash apps. Once you're there, you'll add a new app and they'll ask you what kind of app is this like an iPhone app? Well, no, it's a website app and we'll type in as the name of the app, just the name of our website, in our case, Membership Newbie, but you should type in the name of your own website and click on create new Facebook app ID. They'll ask you for things like a contact email address and your category, which uh, if you don't know, just choose business and then create app ID. So they just make you go through this formality kind of step. Uh, they try to make it helpful by adding a quick start button, but just skip this. Instead, we're going to go to add platform website and enter in the website address for our membership site. Then we'll be asked about our app domain. And again, we'll enter the web address for our membership site. And then finally, this part's really important. Don't skip this step. Go to app review and then choose make public. So this way uh, they can be sure that you mean your, your app to be used for the public and not just for your own account for testing purposes. And then finally, we're going to copy out an app ID and an app secret. You can think of this as like a username and password. We'll copy it out from Facebook and then save them in our member genius settings. Let's get to it. Here we are in the member genius area, the social tab, choose Facebook, and we list these 10 steps right here. So we'll go to, first we'll go to developers.facebook.com slash apps. And I have some apps already set up, but what we want to do is we want to go to add a new app. Click on that one time and it gives us four choices. We want to add a website. All right. For the uh, now it's asking for a name of our new app here and we're going to type in the exact name of our website. It doesn't really matter what you name it, but it's helpful to find it later. So membership newbie is what we'll name this. Create new Facebook app ID. Now uh, we're going to enter our contact email address and I'll choose business as my category and click create app ID. 
And then in my case, it asks for uh, to pass a test, asks me to click on everything that's a wristwatch to make sure I'm not uh, creating a bunch of apps using a program. OK, great. So now we're making our app, and it's, it's trying to take us through all these instructions. We just want to click on, see on the right side, skip quick start. We want to do it ourselves. OK, now we've skipped the quick start. And what we'll do here is we'll go to settings, and uh, then we scroll down a little bit. And you see how it says add platform. So click on that. And then we want to choose a website. OK, and now the URL of our site, uh, in our case, make sure to add the HTTP was membershipnewbie.com. OK, and then we'll go and uh, we will save the changes. And then the other thing we want to do is now you see there's this app domains area and then we want to type in our uh, website without the HTTP and all that stuff. Just type in uh, straight up uh, the, the URL for our site. OK, now we can click on Save Changes. And then the final step is to copy this app ID and this app secret back over to our, uh, our members area. So uh, what we do is we see the app ID here and just highlight it, right click and copy. Go back to our settings where it says app ID, right click and paste. And then don't share this part with anybody, but click on show for the app secret. Highlight that, right click and copy. Go back to our settings here, right click and paste. You see that it's now automatically checked our enable Facebook login and be sure to save all changes. Uh, that way it commits your changes here. And then we, we almost missed a spot. We want to go to the app review tab and, and uh, make make membership newbie public, choose yes. So over here, app review tab. Now make it public, yes. Confirm. This way it will work for anybody. And now all it's up is for us to try it out. So now that we made sure to save our changes and everything, we can go back and log out. And guess what? Now it's added this login with Facebook button. So we click on that. And what it will do is so now we can see what the uh, what people see, right? And we can see here that uh, it says, do you want to continue as Robert? Yes, I do. So now we said now it checked to see if an email matches, but it didn't. So it says this is the first time you're logging in. Continue logging with your existing account. That way we have you linked up. So I'm going to do that. I'll log in with the password I had saved. And now, well, here's the thing is now as the administrator of the site, you can check and see if your Facebook account is linked up by going to the top right. Go to edit my profile and under the member genius section, it says social integration Facebook. And if we ever wanted to unlink this, we wanted to test it again, we could just uh, left click on disconnect and it would forget our Facebook details. But we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that the Facebook login works. So click on log out. And now when we go back to login with Facebook, we see that now it's going to work. Now it let us right in without asking for a username and password. Now, here's one other thing I want to tell you about is that if you have the kind of website where you have a login area in the sidebar, uh, it'll show up there too. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this Hello World post. I'll edit it and I will unprotect it in a member genius. I'll allow access to everyone and update that. And now when I visit the site, whoops, visit the site, uh, and then we'll log out. And now you see that I can still go and log in on the sidebar, but I can also log in with Facebook right there on the sidebar. So that's pretty cool. Now I'm logged back in again. And then one final thing before we switch over to the Google Plus settings is that if we go to Member Genius Levels, choose a level that we have and uh, click on it, we can see that when someone goes to register, they can click and they can register with Facebook. And let's not, this is not going to work with us because we already have this linked to an account. But now someone can one click if they've they're either registering for free or they bought from you. Now they can register their account with you using Facebook. So that is in there for you built in as well. So that's how we add the login with Facebook button. 
Now what I want to do next is add a, a social login for Google. And the steps here are very, very similar. You're going to have to go over to a special area of Google that you probably have never seen before. Uh, you're going to set up, uh, instead of an app, they call it a project. Uh, and we're going to set a special setting so that they, we get access to Google+. Uh, and then kind of the same steps where we tell them what website we'll use it on, and then we'll copy the app ID and the app secret back over only Google decided to be different and call there's a client ID and a client secret but the the idea is the same we're going to click and go over to the Google developer console create a project and name it the name of our website we'll click on a special area to the get to the Google plus API and enable this website to use that part of our Google account the Google plus area we'll click on credentials create credentials OAuth client ID uh, there'll be a button to configure a consent screen where we'll enter the name of our website we'll tell it we're running a web application and give it the name of our website again and then set the authorized redirect URI it's called we'll give you two special web addresses to copy over one for logins and one for registrations and then copy the client ID and the client secret back over to our settings it seems like a lot of steps but it's not uh, once we spell it out for you it'll make a bunch of sense. So once again, member genius, social, and choose Google as your social network. Uh, the client ID and client secret are blank now, but this is the information we're going to get from Google after we set everything up. And then these are those two URIs or web addresses that we'll copy over to Google, but the instructions are listed right here in the plugin. First, a link to go over to the Google Developer Console. All right. So uh, at the very top, you might see a drop down with something in it, but usually it'll say uh, choose a project or create a project. So we're going to go and uh, find this drop down that's kind of hidden, but you find this drop down and choose create a project. So we click create a project. We're going to name it member genius and the name of our site just so we can easily find it, just so that we know what, um, oh, and that's a little bit long. So maybe we'll just call it membership newbie. But this is just so we can find this later on in the future. So click create. All right, now we've created this project, or I guess it's in, in the process of it. So we'll give it a second. All right, now you can see that in this dropdown, the project we're working on is the one we just created. Great. Then the next step, according to our instructions, is to find the Google Plus API. And it's down here under social APIs. So click it once and then click on enable. So enabling and once this is on now that um, that project that we created can access everyone's Google API that uses it. But now we have to tell it what website we'll be using it on. So left click over on credentials and then under create credentials. The one we want to choose is OAuth client ID. Okay. So now we've done that. The only thing we can really do is click configure consent screen. This is the pop up that says, are you sure you want to give permission? Uh, the only thing we have to enter CLEs are all optional. The only thing we want to enter is the name of our site, which is membership newbie. Great. Scroll down and click on save. Next for application type, click web application. And again, for the name, enter membership newbie. That way we can easily find it. Now, very important, pay very close attention, skip the authorized JavaScript origins. We don't care about that. We do care about the authorized redirect URIs and they are right here. So the first one is for logins. So we can right click and copy this. Go over and where it says authorized redirect URIs, right click and paste. OK, and I think if you just click away from that, it'll go ahead and add to the list. But we also have one more. So we go back and choose the registration one. So right click this again and copy, then go back to Google, right click and whoops, make sure we're clicked in here, right click and paste. And now both of those are ready to go. Click create. Don't forget to save your changes. And now the final piece of the puzzle is they'll give us a client ID and a client secret. We want to copy these back over to our member genius settings. This little icon here, this will copy it. So just click on that once. Now it's been copied. Go back over and 
uh, under client ID, right click and paste. Great. Then under client secret, there's another copy link. Click on that once, it's been copied. Go back over to client secret, right click and paste. Great. Now we can save our changes and it's ready for testing. We can go here and we can log out. And you see how now we can log in with Google or log in with Facebook, or if we just go right to the login page, we can, same deal, log in with Google or with Facebook. So I'll click on login with Google. Let me refresh that. It might have taken a second to get caught up. All right, let me try it again. Login with Google. And okay, so it just took a second. So what we should be seeing here is membership newbie would like permission. So yes, I'll accept, allow. And in this case, it was the same deal as before. There was no match for an existing member. So we'll go ahead and log in to now connect our Google account. Now I'm logged in. If I look at my own profile, now I'm connected to Facebook and Google. And what I can do here is log back out. And when I log back in either from the sidebar here or from the login page, it makes no difference. Now I can click on login with Google. I don't know why this is taking a second, but it should. There we go. So for some reason, it just had to get caught up. So if that happens to you, maybe go back and try refreshing. But it looks like now it let us back into uh, the with the Google login. Let me try it one more time. So login with Google. OK, so I think I think we just needed to wait a second for uh, Google's cloud server to get caught up. But those were the steps in setting up a uh, Google login and a Facebook login. It's almost the same process. Go over to their developer area, create a project, or in Facebook's case, it was called an app. Give it the name of our website, uh, enable for Google Plus API, create what's called an OAuth client ID. You don't have to know what that is, just know how to find it. Uh, enter the name of the website. This is a web application. Copy both the login and registration URLs and then uh, copy the client ID and secret back from Google and over uh, into your member genius social settings. So that was how to create a Facebook login and a Google login. And then when we go back to our levels and we click and see what somebody sees once they pay us, they can register either by filling in the form or with Facebook or with Google. Thanks for watching. That's how to set up social login and registration with Member Genius, Facebook, and Google. There are a few things to click on, but as long as you are, are slow and steady and you're very careful about what you look for and what you click on and follow the exact steps in the exact order, you'll do just fine uh, for setting up social login in your membership sites. I'm Robert Plank. Thanks for watching.